Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for waiting. Welcome to the BHQC Population Health Learning and Action Network event call. Please note that all lines have been placed on listen-only mode, and the floor will be open for your questions and comments following the presentation. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to turn the floor over to your host, Ms. Virginia Brooks. Ms. Brooks, the floor is yours. Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Virginia Brooks, and I'm the Director of Physician Services for the DHQC. I'd like to welcome you to our learning event this month on lean training. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. First, we will be recording today's webinar, which will be posted on our online community after the call. And if you need help accessing the recording, please feel free to contact us. Second, this is meant to be an interactive learning session, and we like to encourage as much participation from the audience as possible. We'll have a brief evaluation of our program at the end, and if you would take a moment to provide us with your feedback, that'd be wonderful. We're also interested in suggestions for future webinar topics you would like to see in the future. Throughout the webinar, please feel free to use the chat on the right-hand side of your screen to send us a question or comment. We will do our best to make sure those questions are answered after the presentation, but any question or topic we're unable to answer during the presentation, we'll have a record of and we'll follow up with you after the webinar. Um, we will hold a brief Q&A session after our speaker is done presenting. So now let's get started. On today's call, you will learn what the basic principles of LEAN are and how to apply them in your practice setting. Joining me today is Sean Gable. Sean is BHQC's LEAN Six Sigma Manager. In this role, he serves as an internal resource for quality improvement coaching and training, including the development of LEAN skills and processes. Sean possesses more than 15 years of experience as process improvement and change management leader in complex service industry and manufacturing settings. He is an expert in leading cross-functional teams to achieve higher levels of performance and customer satisfaction through the use of lean, Kaizen, and Demaic techniques. Over the course of his career, Sean has helped hundreds of employees to build improvement skills, establish meaningful metrics, and measurement systems and take ownership of quality by making it part of how they do business. And so now I'll turn it over to Sean and we can all start learning about lean. Great. Thanks, Virginia. Hi, everyone. As Virginia mentioned, uh, this is Sean Gable, the HQC Lean Six Sigma Manager. Thanks in advance for your time and attention as I talk to you about lean and how it can help your practice. Today I'm going to discuss some of the principles of lean as it relates to practice management and why it should be important to you. Then I'll review some tools and tips for implementing lean techniques in your practices. So what is lean? As for the Lean Enterprise Institute, lean is a set of concepts, principles, and tools to create and deliver value from the customer's perspective while consuming the fewest resources. So I'd like to point out the phrase, value from the customer's perspective. You'll hear this a lot throughout this presentation, and tying your decisions back to your customer is a critical piece of lean. The other important piece is consuming the fewest resources. In other words, being efficient. So why do we want to be lean? It allows your practice the opportunity to increase patient customer satisfaction. It's a way to reduce practice costs. It also reduces process waste and delays which typically equates to your daily headaches, and it will improve team morale. So let's get started with the basic principles. We'll dive deeper into each principle in the upcoming slide, but here they are at a high level. The first principle is specifying value in the eyes of the customer. As we focus on delivering value from their perspective, it's critical to understand what is important to the customer. Always keep their point of view in mind. The next principle I'll talk about involves understanding where value is created. Once you know what steps create value for your customer, you can better identify the waste or inefficiencies in the process. I'll discuss the various types of waste so that you can be on the lookout for them as you evaluate processes and look for areas of improvement. The third principle is involving and empowering employees. In order for Lean to be successful, and sustainable, 
the impacted team must be engaged in the process. The best ideas almost always come from the folks that do the task day in, day out. And finally, continue to work towards perfection via incremental improvements. Ultimately, you're looking to continually get better. Ask yourself, are you better than you were yesterday? So the first principle is to specify value in the eyes of the customer. In order to do this, you need to know who your customers are. Don't just breathe through this piece. Write down who the team believes the internal and external customers are. Discuss why. We all know patients are going to be customers, but keep in mind, internal customers are people too. Once you determine the who, now determine what is valuable to each of them. If you don't know, ask. Even if you think you know, you should ask. Because you don't want to spend a lot of time and resources working to improve something that's not very important to your customers. Also, write it down so that you don't lose the focus. For example, think about organizing a supply closet. The customer would be whomever removes materials from that closet. Maybe it's a nurse or a tech. What's important to him or her? Maybe it's that supplies are, are in stock or easy to locate. Are the most frequently used items convenient? Find out what's important, but don't assume. As a tip, sometimes you have to ask multiple times or multiple different ways to ensure you're getting a consistent answer. Um, another reason to ask um, is that your customer's needs will almost certainly change over time. Think about what was important to you 10 years ago versus today. And it also solidifies the open communication with your customers. As another tip, you also hear me say, write it down a lot. Assign a note taker to your meetings. Um, this will save you from revisiting issues that have already been addressed. So now you know who your customers are and what they want. Um, we need to start thinking about the process and the measures. Uh, but first, let's go over a couple definitions. So what is value added? So really, it's, it's anything the customer is willing to pay for, or activities that change the form, fit, or function of a product. Uh, in a healthcare setting, this can also be a service provided. What's non-value added? Basically everything else. I mean, the majority of your process will be non-value added in the eyes of your customer. So, and within that non-value category, there are two types. There's required waste. So think like compliance activities, safety checks, things that are designed and you can't get around. Um, and then there's pure waste. And these are the ones that we're going to really go after. Um, but as a tip, make sure, you, you know, you are challenging the required waste. Sometimes requirements change. So based on your understanding of what's important to the customer, you need to find a way to measure it. If you don't measure the value currently and after improvements, how do you know you've gotten any better? Um, how do you know that, you're, that you continue to meet your customer's expectations? The term critical quality refers to internal quality parameters that relate to wants and needs of the customer. How do I know they're satisfied? How can I quantify that? So think about our office supply closet. We know that having items in stock is important to our customer because we asked them. Uh, so we have to, so we could record the number of stock outs before and after process changes. Maybe there are a lot of expedited shipping costs to rush in needed materials. Here too, we can quantify that before and after improvement and determine, you know, what me measures you need to establish. So, for example, if stock outs are your measure, your CTQ might be no more than one stock out per month. And I know that that's what makes my customers satisfied. If expedited shipping costs are your measure, your CTQ might be no more than $50 per month, um, and that equals a satisfied customer. It's creating a value associated with your customer satisfaction that you can measure. The next principle is identifying the value stream and looking for waste. 
uh, once we have a complete understanding of the process, we can start looking for waste. A value stream is a sequence of activities that are done to create a service or product. Typically, this can be done with the team sitting down to document the current process. I recommend creating a basic process flow on a whiteboard uh, with each of the personnel involved in the process. Document what you currently do today. Inefficiencies and opportunities for improvement often appear while walking through the process. More advanced teams will use a value stream map um, to make more database decisions, but for teams just learning about lean, a basic process, process map will work fine. Just to emphasize, this is a team activity. You need the different perspectives to make sure you aren't solving one problem just to create another. The other piece to continually keep in mind is that we're looking at it from the customer's perspective. Don't lose sight of this. Feel free to put a picture of your customer up in your work area. So continuing with our supply closet example, you need to understand how the closet is stocked. What's the process to order materials? What's the process to stock when materials arrive? How are they used? How does someone know how to order more? Questions like that. So as a tip, even after you've documented the process, walk it, observe it. Make sure it's accurate and the team's not overlooking any critical steps. Another tip is to go through the entire process, even if you've agreed on some areas to address. Changes upstream in the process can have a drastic downstream impact, and you don't want to create more work for yourself. Here's an example of a process flowchart for our supply classes. Um, as I mentioned before, this should be created as a team and documented. As the process steps change, edits can be made. Um, this way you don't have to recreate it every time you want to discuss the process. This also ensures that everyone on the team has the same understanding of how the work is done. So one of the most common phrases associated with lean is eliminating waste. So let's talk about the different types of waste um, so that you know what you're looking for. Because waste is any activity that consumes resources without creating value for the customer. So there can be waste due to transportation. And think about how many times your patient has moved around the office. Moving around the office is not something desirable to the patient, and it consumes the staff's time to make it happen. Inventory, excessive amounts of inventory for supplies type of capital and can cause additional search time when you're trying to find the things you need. Motion is another type of waste. This could be extra steps you and your colleagues have to take through the office searching for something or someone. It could be twisting and turning, setting up equipment or searching for an item. Would your patient consider this to be a value add? Waiting. Let's face it, no one likes to wait for anything. Uh, we need to search for process changes that eliminate or at least minimize waiting. And not only is there typical waiting, there's also waiting to send invoices, pay bills. Waiting provides a, a greater chance of misplacing, forgetting, not to mention delays and payments. Another type of waste is overproduction. In a manufacturing setting, this is fairly straightforward, just making more than you need. In a healthcare setting, this could be preparing extra reports, someone creating a report that wasn't acted on, so now it has to be recreated again next month. Overprocessing, this could be multiple sign-offs, or maybe asking the patient the same question multiple times. Sometimes this is intentional for safety, but it also could be a lack of communication between team members. This is where understanding your process is very important. Defect. A defect is any work that's not done correctly the first time. Remember, lean focuses on using the minimal amount of resources to complete an activity. So you only want to do it one time. The customer only pays you one time for the service. And finally, skill. In order to have a highly effective team, each person should maximize their abilities. This also leads to higher team morale and job satisfaction.
So keep these handy to be on the lookout for waste. And for those of you that like acronyms, uh, remember Tim Woods. Um, and also, sometimes waste can fit into multiple categories. So don't let the team get hung up on, is it motion, is it waiting, is it transportation? The category is not nearly as important as going after the issue. So now that we've reviewed the types of waste, I want to point out that waste is really just a symptom of the problem. From an improvement standpoint, the team needs to go after the source of the waste. So here's some sources of waste that, that might need to be improved. You know, is the facility layout efficient? Can physical adjustments or patient flow adjustments be made? Is there a lot of wait time due to equipment setup? You know, maybe some setup could be done prior to the patient's arrival. Is the equipment reliable? Would some type of prevention, maintenance help with reliability? From a scheduling standpoint, does it make sense to have some personnel come in earlier to prepare for daily activities? Do you have good visual cues? Can any team manager member easily see what patient is ready next? The waste is often in front of us, and we don't always see it. After you found the first of the waste, here are a few waste elimination strategies. The first is a visual cue. Make your process need visible. For example, Label an area with charts to be filed. When there are charts in this location, you can see there's work to be done. Again, not complicated, very straightforward. Um, from a layout standpoint, are we minimizing the customer's movement and transportation through the office? Can they easily tell where to check out when they're all done? Standardization is a tool used to minimize motion or waiting while searching for items. For example, standardizing and labeling where materials are stored in each exam room. I'm going to discuss a tool called 5S that can be used to address this later in the, in the program. And point of use storage involves having materials where you're planning to use them um, to minimize waiting and searching for supplies. Another strategy that's often overlooked is asking why. We live in our process every day. As a result, we don't often see what's really going on around us in terms of waste and inefficiencies. We have to learn how to see. We also must begin to ask why. Why do we do that? Why do we do that in that way? Our procedures and methods often change over time, and the original focus is clouded or no longer exists. So many of our restrictions and barriers are self-imposed. So back to the principles. Principle three is involve and empower employees. Although this sounds really simple, many times it's overlooked. It does take time out of everyone's busy day, but without this piece, the success and sustainability will be limited. Create a team of personnel who are involved in your process. Make sure to discuss the ideas brought up by team members. Write them down. Different perspectives will bring different ideas and suggestions. And make sure all voices are heard. I was working on revising a facility layout for a company in, in Chesapeake, Virginia, and involved a team member that had nothing to do with the operations. She was actually part of IT, so I'd worked with her enough to know that she had a very process-driven mindset, that no preconceived notions about past practices. So she was able to provide the team with valuable, unbiased opinions on the student layout suggestions. As a tip, keep in mind, um, change makes folks very uneasy. Involving them in the process helps to make this transition much smoother. So for example, the office supply closet, you need to involve the people who stock the items and the people that use the items. Discuss it as a team. Allow all personnel involved to see the different perspectives and the why someone is doing what they're doing. The team also needs to have clear ownership of the process and know that they're supported as changes are made. So 
So the final principle I'm going to talk about is Lean's ongoing mindset to continually improve the process. Although you are always in search of the perfect process, don't get so bogged down that you, you skip over an improved process. The point is to continually get better. You'll not solve all issues at once. If it were that easy, it would already be done. How do you know if I'm better or improved? Well, you need to be able to measure the process. Find a way to measure from today, whether that's time, number of occurrences, steps, distance, um, then measure it again after your improvement. And as a tip, start out with an easy win. You know, we call this low-hanging fruit. It will help the help gain the team's support. And remember, we're looking for continuous incremental improvement. So back to our supply closet example, you you may have to make some decisions that some personnel are skeptical of. Commit to getting back together as a group after 30, 60, 90 days with the same people to evaluate. How's it going? You know, this will go a long way with that teamwork and trust. And worst case, you, you go on to another area and look for some additional opportunities. So here's some char characteristics you can expect with a lean culture. An empowered, continuous improvement culture that can easily identify waste. Uh, people who truly understand the customer need and never lose sight of it. All new processes are established with lean principles in mind. Lean tools and thought processes applied throughout the entire value chain. Of course, using standardized processes. And really looking at the flow based on the customer's need. So you set up your processes looking at how a customer would use it. So don't those all sound like characteristics you'd like in your practice? So now we've gone over the principles. Let's talk about some tools that are both effective and easy to use. 5S is a technique used to improve the layout and efficiency of a workspace. A spaghetti diagram is used to evaluate layout efficiencies and excess travel. So what is 5S? 5S is a systematic program for employees to take control of their workspace so that it works for and with them. Over time, stuff accumulates. In a workspace, unused materials, paper, dirt, other miscellaneous items pile up. This causes clutter, creates confusion, and compromises the efficiency of that work area. 5S is designed to eliminate this clutter in order to maintain and create an effective organized workspace. A well-implemented 5S program will lead to decreased waste, cost, and time, as well as increasing items such as quality and safety. In 5S, there's a place for everything, and everything's in its place. It makes staying organized very straightforward. So after you've identified the area in the team, you're ready to start. It's critical that this initiative be done as a team. This can't just be one person setting up an area based on a single opinion. The first step is sorting. Sorting is separating the needed material from the unneeded, then removing what's not needed. Kind of think of it as a spring cleaning. As a team, decide what's needed and what is not. There will be plenty of discussions and voting, um, but at the end of it, you need to decide what's needed and what is not. Once you've determined what is not needed, either discard or relocate it to a separate storage location outside of that work area. To emphasize, you only want to have frequently used items in that area. So, for instance, I have a waffle maker in my kitchen, but it doesn't sit in the middle of the countertop like something like a toaster would or something you'd more frequently use. So, as a tip, also define as a team what frequently used means. Is that daily, weekly, hourly? Um, also, if team members are uneasy about discarding an item, you know, there, there are pack rats out there. Um, commit to relocating it and then revisiting it again in 30 days. But make sure you move it out of the area. The next S is stabilize or set in order. This is a place for everything and everything in its place. 
Now that the team, the team has determined what is needed, you need to determine where each item needs to be located. Think about the types of waste we discussed earlier. Always look to minimize waste such as excess motion, opportunities for defects, etc. Frequently used items should be located the closest, but everything must have a place. And you want to have a good visual representation of where each item is stored. Imagine a pegboard in your garage. So a good visual cue would be to have an outline of each tool stored there. So at a glance, you can see if the outline of a hammer is empty, you know the hammer is missing. Now we've removed the unneeded materials and established a location for each item. It's time to make sure it stays that way. The third S is shine. Regular cleaning and inspection is an absolute requirement. Maintaining the organization is the team's responsibility. If something's out of place, you need to take the initiative to put it back in the correct location. This is one of the reasons we conduct this as a team. There should be a formal inspection schedule, and you can use a sign-off at the end of a shift or each day to make sure it's done regularly. Standardizing is documenting and following the best known method. The less you have to actually actively think, the quicker you can locate something. A good example is the standardization of the horn in your car. It's located in the middle of the steering wheel on almost any car. So in a split second, you don't have to think about where the horn is to use it. In a practice setting, you don't want to spend time searching for materials that are stored in one location in one exam room and then a second in another exam room. And the final answer is sustain. Hold the gains. The team is putting a lot of time and energy into the setup. It will be a team effort to make the improvements a habit and to continually look for additional opportunities. This is where that team involvement completely pays off. Now that you have members of the team, A, they understand what's you're trying to accomplish. They understand why it's important and how it benefits the customers. Each team member has had, had their voice heard and opinion heard. And you've established ownership to maintain that change. So it does take discipline, time, patience, and open communication. So here's an example of a 5F that was implemented in a workspace. Notice that each item has been outlined to distinguish where it goes. This is done to make it very obvious to anyone if something is missing or in the incorrect location. This can also be done by outlining things in tape or various other methods of labeling. Your goal should be to set it up so a person not familiar with the area would know where something belongs. It should be just that easy. Next on the top of the slide, we can see a storage area for crutches prior to a 5F event. You can just imagine how challenging it is to find what you need. Uh, can't you just see them falling over as you try to grab one of those crutches in the back? So you can see the results and the benefits after the 5F event at the bottom of the picture. It's easier to find the crutches you're looking for. It's easy to see when you're running low in the inventory for a certain size. You're certainly less likely to have crutches fall on your head when you try to get out of that. And there's pride and good morale associated with just an organized work area. So PyVest is a great, straightforward tool that can be used in any practice. Hope this tool is something you guys will find useful. The next tool I'm going to talk about is a spaghetti diagram. A spaghetti diagram is a tool used to visualize the path a person or object travels throughout a given work area. It uses a continuous line to trace that path and distance traveled throughout a process. So the path often looks like a, a piece of spaghetti, so that's where the name comes from. It's most commonly illustrated on a floor map diagram and contains the entire process you're evaluating. So, for instance, a hospital floor, an office layout, etc. It's a very simple tool. Um, this very simple tool is used to expose inefficient layouts, unnecessary travel, 
and overall process waste. So in order to create a spaghetti diagram, you start by either printing out um, or drawing a diagram of the floor plan uh, that contains the process that you're, you're evaluating. And this is typically done prior to the team meeting. Next, you'll identify the object of the person you wish to track and its starting point on the map. Start your line and replicate the actual flow of your object or person and continue until the process is done. You can walk through to the group to help drive the message. You want to record your current distance traveled during the evaluation. This will be your baseline. Then you gather the team to discuss, is it realistic? Once the team agrees that it is, then you can start brainstorming on improvement suggestions. Avoid the common mistake of drawing a line through walls. <laughs> do not do this. This is not realistically what happens for that flow of that object or person. And as another tip, it's, it's sometimes helpful to have someone not involved with the process to review the diagram. Sometimes an un, unbiased set of eyes can really help challenge the norm. So here's an example of a spaghetti diagram done by a health department administrative office. The intent of the study was to identify ways to shorten the walking time from one activity to another for frequently performed tasks. Another benefit of the visual drawing is to highlight major intersection points within the room, areas where many paths overlap or causes of delay, and waiting is one of the types of waste that we're searching for. Collaboration of the staff most affected by the current workplace design was also a secondary benefit. Uh, the Health Department Quality Improvement Coordinator facilitated a brainstorming session to identify what to do with those areas of congestion and wasted movement along the path. Focusing on this common goal brought the team closer while highlighting the purpose of placing items in certain work areas. So this tool makes it the tool makes it easy to see opportunities for improvement and helps to explain the flow to people who don't do the work every day. It also gives you a perspective on what your customers experience. Definitely don't forget your customers. So here are a couple just general tips. Um, don't assume that all team members and stakeholders have the same definitions in regard to the terms being used. We all use acronyms, slang, sometimes outdated terms when discussing processes and improvements. Take the time to write down your definitions. Um, it'll, it'll save you a lot of headaches down the road. Start with small improvements. Go after that low-hanging fruit or relatively easy wins. This is especially important for personnel not used to working on teams and to get those quality improvement initiatives moving. Everyone likes to win, so we're, you know, we're looking for progress, right? And then focus on getting better each and every day. So this is a quick review. So here are our four principles. Specify value in the eyes of the customer. You want to understand who your customers are and what's important to them. So make sure you ask, ask, ask. You don't have to measure it. Identify those value streams and eliminate waste to know your process. Look at the process from the standpoint of your customer and go after those various types of waste. Make sure the team's involved. Those best ideas come from the folks who do the job day in, day out. And continually look for improvements. And remember, Tim Woods, there's waste all around you. Although many are very obvious, hopefully this will help you search out some of the less obvious ones. Take the time to work with your teams to go after incremental improvement of your processes. Customer needs, processes, and technology are always changing. So these guiding principles and utilizing some of these lean tools will help you keep pace and create smoother practice management. Thank you for your time. So thank you, Sean. Um, you gave us a lot to think about for our environment, and I know that we're all going to be able to apply some of these basic principles within our practice. Um, 
So at this time, we're going to open up the floor for questions or comments. You know, I'd be interested if anyone just wanted to tell us what changes you think you're going to make as a result of learning um, some of these lean principles. I know one thing that I related to was empowering people. So, you know, making sure everyone understands on your team the transformation to value-based payments so they know what's important and can take ownership of that whether that's documenting everything and properly in the chart or explaining to patients why a certain test or prescription is needed, um, why they need to come back. Everyone has a part in that and empowering them to make sure that they understand, you know, at an individual level what it means is extremely important. Um, so think about that and let us know what questions you have. Laura, would you please let everyone know how to ask a question? Certainly. The floor is now open for questions and comments. If you do have a question or a comment, please press the number 7 or the letter Q on your telephone keypad. Great. And while we wait for questions, and of course you can enter them into the chat as well, I just wanted to make a few quick announcements. Uh, for any family medicine providers attending today, we will be conducting a demonstration with the American Board of Family Medicine next Thursday at noon on their Population Health Tool and Registry Prime, which is free for our Practice Transformation Network members. Um, and if you're interested in joining our Practice Transformation Network, it is not too late. In late May, we'll also be hosting a webinar um, for our Practice Transformation Network participants to introduce our change package and roadmap through the five phases. And additionally, we will be hosting a webinar in June open to everyone on patient engagement and then a three-part summer series on quality improvement techniques, which will be later this summer. Um, we're always open to ideas for helpful topics, so let us know what learning topics would be of interest to you. Um, so I'm going to check in to see if we have any questions on the line right now. Ms. Brooks, as of yet, there are no questions. Again, if you do have a question or a comment, please press the number 7. Okay, well, we'll just wait just one second and see if anyone comes in with a question. So, um, Emily, I just, if you would please make the poll available so if everyone could answer the brief poll about our event today, um, we would appreciate that. It should be popping up on your screen. And I will just check one last time for questions. In keeping with our reading principles, we don't want to go, we don't have to go an hour. We can end just as as quickly, um, give you back some time to your day so we're not wasting your time. And uh, you know how to get in touch with us. If you need anything, you can send us an email or give us a call, and we'd be happy to follow up with you individually. Um, you can always reach out to me directly. Uh, again, my name is Virginia Brooks, and my email is cbrooks at chqc.org. Ms. Brooks, it appears there are no questions at this time. Okay. Then with that, I think we will end today's call. Thank you again, Sean, and um, thank you, everybody, for participating with us. Thank you. This does conclude today's teleconference. We thank you for your participation, and you may disconnect your line at this time.